Hello and welcome in to the 2022 Heart of America Athletic Conference Men's Volleyball Media Day. Very excited to be with you today. My host, my name is Jillian Carroll. I'll be your host today. Also host of Good Day Kansas out of Wichita, Kansas on KSN TV. But today I am joined with a legend. I get to introduce head coach of not only men's, but also women's volleyball at Park University. I'm with coach Mike Telemontes. Thanks so much for your time today. It's good to see you, sir. How are you? You too. Um, we're doing well. We're doing well we're getting ready for the season so we're excited good well before we go there we have to quickly celebrate one heck of a season on the women's side uh you made it all the way to the big game i heard it was an incredibly exciting contest and you walked away with naia avca coach of the year accolades so congrats on that just how what's your level of excitement in regards to the women's season oh it was um oh it, it's still kind of hard to put into words because um we, we struggled to start the season. Um, we came out of the gate three and two. So, you know, just not our normal start. And then we ripped off 31 in a row. So, um, yeah, you know, we kind of got it together. Um, so I was really proud of the group. Um, it was a lot of fun to coach them, especially like getting to the finals. MOBAP was a great team. Um, they best us in the finals. Congratulations to Chris. Great job. They're now the defending back-to-back -back champions. They did a great job. But one of the biggest moments was when we upset Jamestown in the semis. Number one in the country, undefeated. The girls played out of their minds. So I just, you know, you can't define a team by one match, but they had great moments. And so it was a lot of fun. You know, um, we're looking forward to next season, see how the team progresses. But um, yeah, we're just we're just excited and we're proud of the group again. Well, another congratulations on that side. And let's take off the women's hat. Let's put on the men's hat here. Uh, Preseason, what are you thinking? How's it going? What are practices and workouts looking like on the men's side? This is the deepest team. I've been, this is my 11th season. This is the deepest team we've had in 11 years by wow. far. We are, um, so we're coming off a semifinal run from last year. Um, we finished second in the conference tournament. So we knew we had some pieces coming back. We lost two good seniors, um, but we returned five starters and we have nine player recruiting class and they can play. So um, practices have been at a very high level. Um, we haven't been bit by the COVID bug, so we've been able to practice for the last two weeks. Um, so it is, we are, yeah, we are excited to get going because we have, we have all the weapons we need. Yeah, that's got to be an exciting feeling getting head, you know, heading into the season. You know, you have eight of nine of the first matches, you're going to be at home. What will that do for you as far as setting a foundation for the season? And what do you expect out of those eight home matches? Well, because we have so many newcomers that we think are going to be um, pretty impactful, I'm um, getting to start off at home and getting that comfort level in front of your own crowd, um, your own, you know, your own practice facility, your own where you practice, where you play your matches. I think that's going to be huge for us to kind of build that camaraderie before we have to go on the road because the heart is tough. This is a tough conference. Um, I think we've got four teams ranked in the top 15. So when we go on the road, those are those are going to be wars. So to defend home court early to get our confidence up with matches um, at home even though it's, we're playing really tough teams on the, at home, um, it's going to be huge. So we're, we like the way our schedule set up. We like our roster. So yeah, so far everything looks good. Yeah, that's important too. So kind of evaluate for me the heart matches versus your non-conference matches. Do you, are you going to use those differently? How do you kind of approach those? Well, because we're not, so we've only got, so we've got 18 in conference. And right now we've only got uh, six non-conference matches. Um, everything is going to be on the line every time we step on the floor because um, everyone's going to be jockeying for position um, when it comes to the national tournament. So um, like we have a non-conference against Jamestown, um, which is ranked number five, I'm sorry, number six. Um, we've got a non-conference against Ottawa, Arizona, who's trying to break into the national tournament this year. And they've got a great coach, very well coached team. So there's not really a lot of off matches. So um, we know once we start playing next week, um, we have to bring our best. So that's why practice has been very high and, good senior class so they're looking forward to getting started yeah you know looking back last year you you mentioned it yourself you made it pretty far you were pretty happy didn't quite get to where you wanted to be what did you learn from that experience last year and how will that kind of be present in the season moving forward well the the best part was when we lost in the semifinals. um it's like our program we've won five national championships so um it's hard sometimes to get them to understand that a semifinal run is a really good year like that's a great finish um, but as soon as we got started again in the fall, their talk was bringing home a sixth national championship. And so I think getting close last year, playing a great team like Grandview, who was just loaded, getting close, um, gave us that sense that we can compete for a national title this year. So, 
um, yeah, we're just, we got close, but it didn't leave us upset. It left us more with the motivation uh, to get after it again. So like I said, really excited about this group. Yeah. So tell me about the group, kind of break it down. Who are you excited to have back and who's going to be big impact this year? So with our returning starters, we've got um, Luciano Bucci. He's a three-year All-American. Um, our setter, our quarterback, our leader. Um, he split time with Peter Zivkoc, uh, another setter who's great in blocking and defense. Together, they were a great tandem that gave us on a run last year. So those two seniors, plus Philippe Chagas, um, three-time All-American as well. So um, along with Philippe Guida, three-time All-American. So like I'm saying, we've got some returning talent. Um, so, and then not to be left off is Joao Friedrich, um, ABCA National Freshman of the Year, first-team All-American as well. So that's what I'm saying, like a lot of talent coming in. Those guys are going to make impacts. But we've got um, from the recruiting class, um, a Leo, it's Leo Mello. He's a libero who's, I mean, probably the best libero we've ever had, going to be honest. Like, and we've had some great players. So I apologize to all my alumni, but the boy can play. Um, <laughs> probably the best libero. Um, Daniel is a transfer out of Warner from Florida. Great athlete. Um, Nick, a uh, great freshman, just got here. We got a kid named Tommy who's just 17, but he's 6'7". So, you know, he's still growing into his body, you know? <laughs> so um, just, yeah, the group is good. Like there's not, I don't think we're going to have nights where it's just one player who's going to be great. Like we have a great offset in Gabe. Um, so I don't think it's going to be one night where it's just the same guys are going to go off for us. Yeah. Um, whatever the defense tries to take away, we're going to be able to hurt them in other places. So that's why, um, yeah, it's going to be fun and we're going to be tough to stop. Yeah. So what is it going to take? It sounds like you've got the, the team. What is it going to take to exceed last year's fantastic season, but bring home that sixth championship? Um, we need to stay focused on the day-to-day. -day. Um, what happened early in the season, which hurt us in the rankings, was we just weren't good early on. Um, we took a couple of losses on the road. That's why I'm glad we're not on the road to start. <laughs> um, we took a tough road loss at Mobile. We lost at Mobile, both really good teams, tough places to play. Um, this year it's flipped. We get more home games to start. So I think we'll be ready once we go on the road. And I think this group really understands that it's the day-to-day -day grind that'll get us ready for the tournament. So no, we're, we're in a great place. Yeah. You know, entering your 11th season in NAIA volleyball, you maybe know this sport and this, you know, this league better than anyone. Can you share with us just your thoughts on the evolution of the game, um, across not only NAIA, but also the heart itself? Oh, well that, I mean, so like when I started, um, you maybe had three or four teams that were contending for a national title, to be completely honest. Like we were all, it was top loaded. Um, now the depth of the, of the NAIA, the amount of teams that can play, um, the players that are in the NAIA now. Um, I mean, that's why we said any given night, that's why we have to be ready to go. It is just, and it's great. It's great for the sport. It's great for the heart because these teams are loaded. And then um, the, I think what's also been cool is that it's such a big deal to be a men's coach at the collegiate level. You've got a lot of really great coaches like uh, Donan from Grandview went straight from the NAI to division one ball state. So like he made that jump because just the level of play, he can do that. So our conference is loaded with really good coaches. Um, there's a lot of great coaches across the country. So it's just a fun challenge. Like every night you're going against someone who has game plan for you really well. We're going to have to do our job with film. So um, we really look, I mean, the men's season is a lot of fun because guys are intense, guys are competitive. Um, great coaches we're going up against, great programs. So yeah, it's from year one to, to 11 now. Um, it's just been a lot of fun seeing this rise. And now we're a national championship sport. So that red banner is just uh, out there and uh, just waiting for someone to take it. I love it. And I foresee many more to come. You know, we have to, when you've accomplished what you have as a coach on both men's side and women's side, I got to know, like, what started your inspiration? Who influenced you? I know your father was a big impact on you getting involved in volleyball, right? Yeah, that and that is still. Um, so the thing with my dad, uh, so my brother's a lot younger than me, about 10 years. So my dad and I were coaching together in high school. And our goal was always to win a title as a family. And so um, he passed away before I was able to do it with him. But my brother and I won three high school titles together. And then kind of everything is just dedicated to him. So, and now every ring is dedicated to my kids. So it's always a family affair for me. So um, my daughter has a ring with her name in it, my other daughter, my third daughter. So um, yeah, it is like, these guys are a family to me. My women's team, we're just one big, I mean, you know, sometimes it's functional because you know, I can't always be the nice guy, um, but no, it is just a great group, great group to be around. And 
my dad would have a lot of fun with these guys. So um, that's what got me started. And this is what I'll be doing for the rest of it. So I'm happy. Yeah, I imagine he's very proud of you. And uh, just from an outside perspective, it's incredible to watch your influence continue to grow the game. So what you're doing on both men's side, women's side is incredible. Um, we thank you for your time. We wish you the best. Park is so blessed to have you. So is the heart. And of course, just the game in general. Um, what you're doing is awesome. So best of luck to you this year, coach. And just thanks so much for your time. Oh, thank you, Jillian. Always fun.